Hi everybody, I'm Terry Burton over on The Robin's Nest by Terry, and I'm going to do a simple tutorial for you today. It is something that you can purchase at the Dollar Tree. This is a really cute rabbit. Dollar Tree, $1.25, they just recently came out, so if you find them in your Dollar Tree, I would buy a few of them because you could paint these in any color to go with whatever wreath you're making, whether it be for Easter or just for spring. It's going to be a really simple painting project, so I hope you enjoy it. I have a painting group that meets once a week. It's called Painting for Profits, and I also have a monthly Painting of the Month Club where I teach you other painting patterns that are quick, easy, and a great way to, um, to profit from what you paint. I also have a selling group where members of my group gather. Every weekend they do live sales over on Facebook. It's called Virtual Home Decor Marketplace. You'll find all my links linked into your email that you're going to receive. So I hope that you find this tutorial enjoyable because I want it to be as easy as possible. Sometimes when you're painting, you know, it's kind of like me. If I were to make a wreath, I would be kind of nervous. But I'm going to make it step by step as simple as possible. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, we are ready to paint. I have some just basic colors out here, black, red, pink, orange, and green. Because not only are we going to paint the bunny, but you can also get these little carrots at Dollar Tree as well. And it'll be great if you put some ribbon in here and then he can lay across the stomach because this is going to be easier to paint than having to paint something right on his stomach. So we're just going to start. You can go ahead and paint this whatever color you would like. I'm going to keep mine white to be simple. And I'm going to try to keep the brushes as simple too. I have a round brush, a smaller round brush, and a little liner brush. And then I'm going to grab a flat brush. So this is what a flat brush looks like. And I'm just going to use that pink. I've The actual color is Cactus Flower by Deco Art, but you use whatever color you have. And we have this ear that's flopping over, so we don't need to put too much of the pink on, just a little bit right there and some here. So you're staying here on this imaginary line right now. Just adding that right in there. You can also go in, I'm gonna take a little bit bigger flat brush if you want to add a stomach here, cute pink stomach. So, you know, a rabbit and a soft brown, a soft gray, a soft tan, all of them look nice. That right in there. Here's one that I painted previously in more of a tan color and added browns to it. And so you see once we put the carrot in there, and if I had a little bit of ribbon, that would make it look even better. So any color you choose, they would all look pretty. Now for the cheeks, and when I do cheeks, I like to take a paper towel, place my index finger in there, Grab just a little bit of pink and just lightly rub it right in there. Now we're going to take the smaller round brush and put in a nose. It makes it easy if you prop your project up about a 45 degree angle you get a better perspective of it here. So we're just going to do the shape of an upside down triangle. A 
And then we're going to put in some eyes. Sometimes the eyes take a little bit to do, but I'll show you a little trick to doing them. I'm going to just take the brush. Now it's wet, but every time I get my brush wet, I have to drop it on my paper towel to get rid of the excess water. So remember that rule. If you ever drop it in your water, always touch your paper towel before you pick up any paint. That way your paint's not watered down. So I've got a good oval in here. Now the trick is to get a good oval on the other side. And I just look at this one while I'm putting that in. And then I'm going to flip it upside down because sometimes it's easier to see what you're doing here. And then I'm going to show you another way to do eyes that may be even simpler for if you're a beginning painter. Because it's real easy to, for these eyes to start getting out of control. So I make them small to begin with. And then as I'm looking at them, they grow out a little bigger. So start small and then keep gradually increasing the size till you've got it right where you want it. And I'm good with that. And then I can see here, let's bring that down a little bit. All right, if you want some really easy eyes, you can take a flat brush again. Let me show you on the back. Set your flat brush down and just pull. These make your rabbit look more primitive looking and a lot of people, especially people, if you're selling it on Etsy, love this more primitive look. Just like that. And you don't have to worry too much about um, making sure it's the right size or anything like that. Now we're going to do a quick shading. So I'm going to take my larger round brush and this isn't a good brush, it's been used, so it's always easier when you're going to do this to use a brush that's been used. I'm going to actually dry brush, so most of my black paint's going to come off. And I'm just going to run a small line right here, right along the edges. And that's going to create a little bit of detail without you having to worry about definitive lines. And so half of my brush is actually off of the surface and half is on because none of your lines will ever look the same. Some will be darker in spots than others. I'm just going to go around the whole thing. And these are great. For $1.25, you can even use this as just a pattern guide if you wanted to paint it on something else. A lot of the Dollar Tree templates are good for that. Okay, so I did complete outline. Now it's going to be really easy for me to go in and just separate things. So I'm going to separate where we started here on the ear because this ear is actually flipped over. We put that line there. And then again, you can see the difference this is going to make when we cut that ear off right there. And now it looks like a separate piece. Really easy. All right, I'm gonna clean this brush a little bit because I do want to shade, but I wanna shade simply inside of my pink. So once again, I've got a darker red. You can use country red, any darker shade than your pink. And we're just going to do that same dry brushing 
right around and where it flips over. Again. You could even do this for a little kid's um, paint party. It'd be really a lot of fun because there's not a lot of steps to this. Okay, so I'm going to go around the nose the same way. Just a light dry brushing. And around his stomach here. All right, when we were doing this, I totally forgot to do the pads of his feet. So I'm going to put three oval shapes right there. And over here on his foot, I mean, let's do a heart. Or you can just do a circle, whatever is easiest for you. This is kind of like just a simple learning tutorial. Now you see that we have these legs that aren't attached to the feet, and this would be perfectly fine. But I wanna show you how to separate them if you want to, just the way we did the ears. So once again, I'm gonna take the round brush, I'm gonna dip into the black paint. I'm gonna take most of it off on my paper towel. And I wanna follow the curve of the foot. So I wanna kinda of come in and go down. Round that out right there. So you can see the difference in the two. This one's a little bit different shape. So we're going to go out, kind of come in and go back out. Now, if you're making a wreath, you're not going to see a lot of these areas. So it's going to be simpler for you. And then take that, actually, I'm going to take the stencil brush and I'm going to dip it in some white paint. I'm going to grab some white. And now we're going to do the opposite. Where we shaded, we're going to come in and highlight. So I've got white on my stencil brush. I'm going to wipe most of it off. And come right here in the center and I'm just going to scrub it. Now, if you get too much white paint, just keep scrubbing or go in with a paper towel and take some of it off. And if you really don't like it, just go over it with your pink and it will lighten it naturally. So either way is fine. I just like to scrub it in even over my shading. Just like that. Let's put a little bit in the ears. And then right here in the nose. I like to add just a little bit of highlight in my eyes. I'm just gonna dab a little bit right there. Now I've gotta go back over to my feet because we did the pink, but I need to go back and do the red. So ideally you should have two coats of your pink just to make sure everything's covered. And then a dry brush again. We're gonna take most of that dark red off. And I'm just going to go around the parameters of the foot. Sometimes it's easiest if you let this dry a little bit. I wanna bring out my hearts a little bit more, so I'm not going to dry brush the heart part. I will be highlighting it, so some of that'll come off, but kind of want my hearts to stand out a little bit more than the 
pads of the feet. Then I can even come in here and take some of that paint out, just like that. So my edges aren't so solid. I wipe it on my paper towel, get the excess off. And come right down there. And we are good to go as far as the rabbit. Now, you know, he looks really good. Well, we do have to do a little bit of lining but look how cute it's going to look once we put that carrot there. All right, on the eyes, you're going to need a thin liner brush and you wanna get them wet. I'm gonna make sure I don't have any paint in there, which I do. And I want this to be a nice fine line. I am used to a long liner brush, which is hard for a new beginner. So I would use a short one. But when you want a really thin line, I use I like to use the Apple Barrel Gloss Paint. It's got a good consistency to it. And so if you feel comfortable doing eyebrows, you just set it down and pull. Set it down and pull. Now, if you are intimidated by the mouth on a rabbit, really easy to just start at the middle of his nose and pull down. And that's all you have to do. Sometimes people will just put a little circle at the bottom, then he looks kind of bewildered. And you can have either look. It is a lot harder to come in here. I'm going to pull down right there. It's even hard for me to get those exactly. I mean, you'll never get them exactly, but. Just like that. And then using the same liner brush, let's put in some whiskers. If you would like, you can use any type of extra fine paint markers. They work just as well, but if you seal it, you have to test a part of it to make sure that it's not going to run. So I would, you know, write on like a piece of cardboard, spray it with your sealer if that's what you use, and test it. Okay, I'm also, once again, you don't have to do this. I like to put a line around everything. But you can see here where I didn't put a line on it, it's perfect. It, there's no reason to put this line there. Only if you feel like it's not going to be a struggle for you. Okay. I'm just going to put a couple little dots, touch my brush down. Now let's get into those eyes. Then turn it. I'm going to take my liner brush with a little bit of white and we're just going to put like a C shape down here at the bottom if it's in this direction. And then on the tip of your paintbrush, where it's nice and round, you're going to go into your white paint and set it down straight on and kind of rotate it till it's as big as you want that circle to be. You have to reload for the second circle, set it down and rotate. And it's really cute. So, Back to your um, liner brush, <clears throat> if you want to add some more lines. So I intended to keep this as simple as possible. So the, this is not needed as well. I put a couple little dot, uh, strokes there, one across the nose, and that's all I need to do to make that cute face. 
down here on his belly, I can come down and make a couple like that. Now it's starting to look like an Easter egg. And if you want to paint an Easter egg, or they also have Easter egg shapes at Dollar Tree, you could so put that in there. Because when you're making a wreath, you're going to have a ribbon around his neck, so that eliminates having to paint anything there. You can also have your ribbon laying down. However you design that is going to be perfect. You can just take basic steps of what I've shown you and take whatever you're designing because you know, you know, I'm not sure what you'll be designing. So you'll know which of these steps you can leave off that are just extra steps that's not needed. So I'm going to take my stencil brush, go back in here, scrub in my heart and in my pads there. Perfect. So you can see that those look good the way they are. If you want to go in with your liner brush and you don't have to be exact, just touch it down and pull. Start at the top, touch down and pull. So it doesn't need to be a completed line, meaning it doesn't have to join. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is basically a, you know, your wreath is what's going to stand out and make this very beautiful. This is something I just want you to be able, you know, once you paint one of these, it's not like any sign that you've purchased before. You know, it's going to make your wreath a one of a kind because I don't care how many times I paint these things, they never look alike. And that's where the freedom of your, you know, what you prefer, the colors you prefer, all of that, you can personalize it with your own touch. Okay, so if I wanted to add lines here, I could. I could come in and add lines here, but this is all extra. This is just, you want to practice and Kind of add more detail. Okay, perfect. If you want to add eyelashes, eyelashes are very difficult and they have to be thin. So I always roll my brush to get any excess paint off and I set it down beside the eye and just pull some eyelashes up. Once again, it's if you, um, let me give you this tip because I'm a very shaky person and I have to lay down the my forearm in order to get my line straight. It makes it so much easier. If I'm painting my hands up here, I'm never going to get a straight line. Okay, also inside of my eyes, if you want to add a little bit more, I like to come in here and add an extra dot by that big one. This makes them a little bit cuter. And otherwise, let's go to our carrot that's going to sit right there. Now I went ahead, because I had painted this before, I wanted to show you, so I went over it with my orange once again and my green. So. Painted orange, painted a dark green. I'm going to dry brush with my dry brush again. I'm just going to go in there and give it a little highlight. On my green, same thing. I mean, kind of go with the direction of the carrot though. Simple. You put your little ribbon right there and it'll be perfect. This also came with a piece of jute so that you can hang your rabbit as well. And then I'm gonna take the, um, which brush did I use? That round brush again, dry it off. <clears throat> and then pick up a little bit of the dark red. Take most of it off and then do a shade line 
real simple, right on my carrot. Put it down there. Now, just picture it with a ribbon that came, comes from your, um, your supply drawer. I don't have much in ribbons, but it makes a really cute project for Easter and this will be able to be something that you can add to your wreath that will set it apart from other wreaths. So I hope you enjoy making it. Once again, I am Terry Burton over at the Robin's Nest by Terry. You will find me on Facebook three to four times a week painting live. I also have a painting membership group called the uh, Painting for Profits and the Painting of the Month Club. So check my links if you're interested in that. And so there's a brown bunny. I haven't finished his feet yet. A brown bunny, a white bunny. And you can tell, you can make so many different facial expressions to make him yours. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Thanks, everyone.